morning, EKM. Good morning, EKM. Come on. Good morning, EKM. Good morning. It's wonderful for us to be in the house one more time. Another Sunday morning we've gathered together. We know we're two or three touching and agreeing that there he is in the midst of us. So I say good morning to our online church this morning. We're touching and agreeing with you this morning. Come on, church. This morning we've gathered to exalt his name and to bless his name. He's a good God, isn't he? He's a good God, isn't he? Amen. So let's put our hands together and rejoice that he's given us another day to bless his name. Father, we've gathered in your house this morning to bless and adore your name. We've gathered to exalt you. We've gathered to bless and to praise you, Jesus. We've gathered, Lord God, also with great expectation, Jesus. We know, Lord God, that we need your presence. We know that we need your spirit, your presence and your spirit, oh Lord God, to abide and to rest with us. So, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ this morning, God, I pray, Father, that your presence will reign supreme. Your presence this morning, Father, will travel the airway. Your presence, Lord God, will meet us at our place of need. Show up, Father, and show up strong. Show up and show up in your authority. Show up and show up, Lord God, the way that you can do, the way that only you can do, Father, because we know that you are our Heavenly Father. We know that you are the great creator and the great I am. So, Father, have your way in our midst this morning as we turn it all over to you. Have your way this morning, Father. Put your hands up and celebrate the presence of the Lord. While we bless the name of the Lord this morning, we can. While we magnify the name of the Lord, our God is great and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How we bless his holy name. But how do you believe that our God reigns? Does he reign over your life this morning? I want you to turn to them and say, my God reigns. My God reigns. Hallelujah. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Blessings and honor. Blessing and honor. Glory and power unto our God forever and ever. All of the honor. All of the praise all is yours. The praise is yours. Yours forever. Yours forever. Say hallelujah.
you cause the dead to rise And that's why we dance to liberty Cause you'll do it all again
Yes. Our God is in control. Steadfast and immovable. There's nothing that's impossible. Because our God reigns forever. Our God is in control. Yeah. Steadfast and immovable. Nothing is impossible. Our God reigns forever. Our God reigns forever. Yes, He does. Our God. Our God reigns forever. But our God. Our God reigns forever. put anything in there that's responsive to worshiping God while we're gathered together in his house. I'm happy to be here this morning. I got a few announcements with you uh, for you before we continue with the service. Um, Monday night recap um, is going on. Who was at Monday night recap last week? How did that go? It was good? I thought it was good. So it's going every, it's going every Monday at 7 p.m. on Zoom so you can get the link on the website ekmtoronto.com. Uh, also, Women's Book Club is on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. How is that going? All right, so don't forget to read between chapters uh, four and six, and again, meet on Zoom, uh, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Also, Midday Breakaway is happening Wednesdays at 12 p.m., again, on Zoom. So you can get the links for all of these, um, these activities at ekmtoronto.com. Uh, uh, and also, don't forget, we've got Pastor Jeffrey Cornfoot uh, coming from Sherwood Global on January 29th. Pastor Colvin was teasing me last week because I was reading it like, Pastor Jeffrey Cornfoot, from, like, this is not somebody that I know. Like, I don't know what he does. Like, I don't know what he's coming to talk about. This is my friend. This is a great man of God. And he's coming here to talk to us about evangelism. So get excited for that, because it's going to be good, because oftentimes we don't know how to talk about the things of God, and this guy, his whole job, both in the church and in the work field, is to teach people how to talk about the things of God uh, on a regular basis. So that's going to be a great day, January 29th. Pastor Jeff from Sherwood Global. And you can check out all this information on the website. While you're on the website, open another tab, go to Google, please leave us five-star review for EKM Toronto, all right? Go ahead and do that. It's good for us, it's good for growth, it's good for promotion, it's good for getting the word out there because that's everything that we're trying to do, all right? Amen. All right, God bless you guys. Amen, God bless you, God bless you. Let's give Pastor Kadim a hand. Awesome, awesome. 
I love that he mentioned that sometimes we forget that what we're learning about in the word is 100% applicable to our everyday life. That we should not be living fragmented lives. We shouldn't be split down in the middle like we're somebody at work or we're somebody at home and we're somebody else at church. Amen? We are one in Christ. We are a holistic being. God lives and breathes and operates through us. I'm excited. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, something I was thinking about this morning as uh, Raquel was leading us in this morning through pre-service prayer She said that Mary and Martha invited Jesus in and I stopped And I began to wonder I said this is a, a question I'm going to pose to the congregation as we prepare our hearts to give this morning Have you invited Jesus in? into your own life Have you invited him into your finances? Can I tell you one thing that's indicative of the fact that Jesus reigns, our God reigns, that's what we're singing about this morning. If you are to look at the ways you give, it's indicative if Jesus truly reigns in your life. If God reigns, God is a giver. He gave us the best gift possible, Jesus Christ. How you order your finances is indicative of who's really in control. Is it you or is it God? The Bible says in Matthew 6, 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and everything will be added unto you. Has God ever come up short in your life? I'm just curious, ever. Faithful is our God. He's trustworthy. We can take him at his word. And the Bible says to seek ye first the kingdom of God. So here's, here's what we can do right now in the next couple of seconds. We can take a look at how we are ordering our finances. If you are diligent, consistent at giving your 10% of all that you make, of all of your earnings, that is indicative that God reigns and is in control of your finances. It's indicative of who, prior, who you prioritize and what you prioritize. Do you prioritize the phone bill, the mortgage, the rent, or do you prioritize God? So that truly, all things can be added on to you that's the principle and i would be remiss if i didn't teach what the bible is teaching because again it's not we're one way on sunday and then another way monday right through saturday this is the thing we live and we breathe i believe it with all of my heart and i do my best to order my life according to the word and i would be remiss if i didn't challenge you all to do so in the same way that God challenges myself and my husband, I am here to challenge you all. Allow God to, to order your finances by prioritizing him. Amen? Amen. Let's just posture our hearts. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Your word does not lie, but it goes forth to accomplish that which you've set out for it to do. I thank you, God, that you've spoken your word and you've given us clear instructions to prioritize you. Seek ye first, not last, not second or third or fourth but first the kingdom of God. So Lord, today we're asking you to show us the ways we can prioritize you in our everyday life, even in our finances. No place is excluded so that truly indeed the fulfillment of your word can come to pass. All things can be added unto us. Father, we believe that you are a faithful God, that you're not just faithful to your people, but you're faithful to performing your word. So God, we release this word over your people right now, that you will add all things onto them, that they will never be in lack, God, that they are lenders and not borers, that they are the head and not the tail. Father, we speak these things and we believe it, that we are blessed to then be a blessing, God. We are blessed so that we can then be a blessing we release the word father and we pray that by your spirit that you will cause these things to come to pass we believe you and so we sow by faith not with what we can see but we sow by faith oh god in this tithe in this seed in this offering we sow by faith believing that you are more than able in jesus name we pray amen god bless you this morning in your giving worst things one of the worst things is not being accepted 
not being accepted by your friends who you thought were friends, not being accepted by a, your family who you thought you were family. You know, they say blood is thicker, you know, but not to be accepted and, and to feel alone, it causes such a, it can cause anxiety just on your mental, it's just being trapped and just feeling alone in some kind of darkness, but we serve a God that is light. Ooh. We serve a God that is awesome. We serve a God that will accept you for who you are. We're not talking about man, but we're talking about our Savior. Man who will stop you from entering in just because of how you're dressed and the way how you look. But our God will accept you. He will accept you. Come. Come to me. So, Father, we thank you. God, we bless your name, Jesus. Yeah. I have a seat at the table. Know who I am. I know who I am. I have a seat at the table. I know who I am. I know who I am. I have a seat. I have a seat at the table. Know who me 
word for your love. It's already mine. You say that I'm accepted. You want to make me earn this grace. No, it's all.
let's stretch our hands in the, in the building right now. The devil seeks who he may devour. And oftentimes, we think about something catastrophic when we mention that scripture, but he seeks who he may devour. In other words, he can use simple things like distractions. Your day to day, your week, simple little things that he can use to lure you out. He seeks who he may, may, which means that Satan looks for permission from you. He's seeking who he may devour. That means that we give off signals in the heaven. I mean, signals in the atmosphere that allows Satan to say, this is a person I can go after. Like those animals who travel in the pack and then one person starts to straggle behind or stray. It's a warning sign, not a warning sign, but it's a telling sign to the one that is trying to consume that animal that this is the one we can prey on. When you're in an atmosphere like this, the Satan will try to do things to distract you, to pull you out of worship. The moment he pulls you out of worship, he, he's seeking, remember he's seeking to rob you, to, to, to rob whatever God is trying to do in your heart in the moment. This is why when we are in an atmosphere like that, like this, we are to remain focused on him and him alone. No distractions. Get the weak out of your head. Get situations that you are going through right now. Get those things out of your head. Empty it out. A matter of fact, put it at his feet. Put it at his feet. Any sin that you have committed this week, put it at his feet. You're accepted by him. End of discussion. This is not up for debate. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. With that mindset now, open your mouth and give God some praise. Begin to speak to him. Begin to speak to him. Don't be afraid. Don't be scared. Speak to him. Speak to him. Come on, praise team. Come on, praise team. Do I have worshipers this morning? Speak to him. 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 Thank him for accepting you with all your flaws. I know I thank him for accepting me because I ain't perfect. Oh, no. Oh, I don't always get it right. <laughs> but I have a God that is always on my side. And though he slay me, yet will I trust him because I know it is for a reason. I know it's for a reason. It's for my good. It's for my good. It's for my good. All things, all things, not some things, but all things, all things, good and bad. All things work together for my good. Why? Because I love him. I love the Lord this morning. I love the Savior this morning. Oh yeah, because he saved my soul. Come on, open your mouth. Where's my leaders in this house? Open your mouth. Set the example. Where's my leaders? Set the example. Praise team, open your mouth. Break up the stony ground. Break up the stony ground in the name of Jesus. We are not a weak church. We're not a lethargic church. We are bought with a price. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I've been redeemed. I don't know about you, but I have been redeemed. I have been redeemed. I have been redeemed. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times. I will. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to push you guys in 2023 to give God audible praise a joyful noise, a sound, a sound within the house. I'm going to push the praise team. I'm going to push leadership. I'm going to push everyone because this is the house that I desire. 
that God has impressed on my heart. And I'm loud at home in my closet when I'm praying, so there should be no exception when I'm out. When you're out, you should be the same. Don't be ashamed. Go all out for Christ. You came here. You drove here. What else would, you know? <laughs> if, you, if you came all the way out here, you might as well praise him. You might as well praise him. Tomorrow's not promised. Tomorrow's not promised. At least I know if I go, there's a report that I went out worshiping. Amen? Amen? Amen. Turn your Bibles. First, let's give the praise team a round of applause for the fantastic work that they're doing. <clears throat> also, I want to say happy birthday to our bishop. <laughs> yes, happy birthday, sir. The man who planted it all. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your, your sacrifice. Amen and amen. <clears throat> I, uh, I was with the, the leadership team yesterday. We were doing a workshop yesterday. And during the workshop, my mom called me to let me know that my dad's in the hospital again. And she was frantic and whatnot. And so obviously, needless to say, my mind completely shifted over there. And uh, I went to go see him last night and he's he's um attached to all these tubes and stuff like that and when i got there my mom said that you just missed i guess he couldn't breathe and all the all the nurse the doctors were all running in and she was she stepped out so she didn't know that they were running in for my dad and so then she goes in to see who they're running in for and finds out my dad but he's doing he's 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 stable he's stable and the reason why i say that is is because when I was there last night, I was sitting with him, and I, and I just said to God, you know, it'd be, can you just make, um, heal my father? Because uh, it just, it will make ministry easier for me. Because it's hard to uh, look after my parents. My dad is 83. So it's hard to look after my parents, to look out for my parents and, and whatnot, and then the church, and then my kids and my own aspirations and stuff like that. But I felt in that moment, God was saying, you're built for this. You're, I, I built you for this. You just got to handle it, do what you got to do, and trust that I will do the, the rest for you. Take care of the responsibilities that I've given you and trust me to handle everything else. Handle everything else. But in that moment, I was sitting there and I realized that that is my dad's testimony. My dad served the house of the Lord, worked a nine to five, went to church, trained us all up, and did the best he can. And it was in that moment I was sitting, talking to my dad, and while I'm talking to him, my brother is preaching somewhere. He's preaching at, at my dad's church, he's preaching. And I'm sitting there and my brother's preaching. My sister is, is um, uh, minister as well so my brother's preaching and I'm sitting there and I'm I gotta preach the next day and he just he's just laying there and he's so calm and relaxed and he just looked at me and said I'm 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 just proud of I'm proud of the the legacy that I'm leaving behind because one is preaching one is getting ready to preach the other one's a minister the other one's a minister and I realized we naturally became what we saw in our father because my father just he didn't waver he just didn't waver never saw my dad break down never saw my dad cry he was just i was raised by an old school yardie an alpha male <laughs> you know I mean? old school roots man and um i just thank god for that but i'm saying all of that to say this that that generation bishop's generation but my dad's generation is before bishop's generation but that generation was very militant. They didn't break their word. They did what they said. They stuck to the gospel. They worked. They took care of their home and their responsibilities, right? And as a result, Bishop's generation came up and took follow suit, right? And my fear is our generation is just so fickle. We're just so fickle. 
the beginning of the year, the first Sunday of the year, the building is almost full. The second Sunday, the building's almost full. The third Sunday, which is this third, th you're starting to see the decline. It's like we are so fickle. And the Lord visited me and showed me. I specifically um, allowed you to be raised by this man to show you stability. Stability. And I'm encouraging you. You may not have, you may not have grown up in an atmosphere like me, where, you, where your dad was a solid rock and your mom was uh, a complete support system. I'm talking about the kids used to tell him, Pastor Modis, the kids used to make fun of me in school because they're like, your head's always greasy. But what they didn't know is every morning we had to line up and he would oil us. And I go to school with the oil all over my face. <laughs> running up and down in jungle and they're like greasy boy and I, <laughs> the oil's all over my face but but this is what I grew up under this is what I knew this is what I knew that may not be your experience but it can start with you you may not have kids but your friends are watching you your peers are watching you are you st stable in their eyes are you a rock in their eyes amen I want to encourage this generation, come what may, come what may, you got to stand firm or else the generation that's coming after us is going to be so milky, we're going to be in trouble. We're going to be in trouble. You want to end like my dad as he's nearing, you want, you want to sit and be like, my dad doesn't sit there and say, boy, I wish I could have bought another house or two. Or I really wish I could have bought the Bentley. Or I wish he, he doesn't say any of that stuff. He's just calm and relaxed because he's seeing what stability in God gave him. Raise your hands and tell the Lord, please make me stable. Please make me stable. Please make me stable, Father. Grant unto me stability. In your precious holy name we pray. Amen. Go to Genesis chapter 1. This is going to be a quick word. Because I got to go back to see my dad. Genesis chapter 1, if you are struggling to find it, uh, more than warm up the baptism tank. <laughs> In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and void, or without form and void, and darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Then, not before, then God said, let there be light, and there was light. The topic of this message is when God speaks, but I want to change it to there's, there's a light for that. Sorry, media team. I'll, I'll, I'll work it out. Sorry, Casey. There is light for that. Father, I pray that you'll speak through me. Let this word penetrate the hearts of men. In your precious holy name, I pray. <clears throat> Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. How many have been enjoying this, the, the sermon so far? The last two sermons I know hit home. I've hit home. I've been in my prayer closet stewing over things, and the Lord is showing me so much, so much, so much in His Word. And, uh, you know, we, we spoke about identity two weeks straight. Identity, because without your identity, you don't know your purpose. And if you don't know your purpose, you don't know your function. And Albert Einstein said, I believe it was him, he said, No problem could be solved on the level that it was created on. So your thinking can't solve your situation. You have to come up higher. You have to reprogram your, your mind. You got you to gotta change your mind, and then the answer will come. The problem, like I said last week, is heaven or hell has gates. And, and gates, we know, in snares and traps, it keeps things within. It keeps things within. That's what hell does. And so the Bible says that hell has gates, 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 which means there's multiple ways. Uh, where's Bernard?
turn me down a bit. Um, there is multiple ways, there's multiple ways by which hell can ensnare. And we spoke about fear because fear, that's what Satan tried to use with, with Peter. And we saw that Peter was able to combat that because Jesus combats fear with love. Amen? He combats fear with love. And so when you think about the struggle of the origin of man, this is scientists. Scientists know that in order for us to discover, this is not what I'm preaching on, but I just feel to drop this and then go to what I'm preaching on. Scientists have um, always known in order for us to know who we are, this is atheist, we need to find the answer above, right? We need to find the answer above. We can't really find the answer on earth because we're here and we need to find the answer above. So we know for a fact that we need to create something powerful enough to bring us out there. Why? Because there is the law of gravity. Gravity is, if you will, Earth's gate. So we need to build something that's powerful enough to defy the laws of gravity, to get us out into space, because then from there we can discover the stars or analyze things, timing, precision, all the things that they're doing up there, and that will give us a greater look. That's where they got the theory of the Big Bang and all of those other things because they had the opportunity to get out into space. But Earth has this gravitational pull that naturally pulls you back down, demanding that you stay here. When it comes to hell, hell has a gravitational pull. It's a gate as well that demands you to stay there. So you need something powerful enough to defy that. Belief in Jesus or Jesus is that power that allows us to defy, if you will, the law of gravity, which then we can penetrate the atmosphere and go where he is in terms of knowledge and understanding about who we are. In that way, we can look down and see things in a panoramic view once we get up there. The problem is, is that jets obviously need jet fuel, and your jet fuel is what uh, burns up and allows the power of the rocket to go up into space. That is your belief. That is your belief, right? So your belief in Jesus allows you to break and penetrate the gates of hell, and then you can shoot out and do what God has assigned you to do. Amen? The problem is, once again, hell has gates, and gates are designed to keep you in. Oftentimes, gates can be critiques, critics, because if a rocket goes up in the air, everyone sees it, you're exposed, so critics cause us to, to go back down, Believe it or not, I, I personally feel like a nine to five, if you're not designed to be in the job that you're in, uh, it's, it's, it's hard to say this, but it's a gate. It's a gate. It's a gate. The prodigal son entered into a gate. The Bible says that he was spending his money on prostitutes because the brother said he was. So he's spending his money on prostitutes. And then after when he runs out of money, the Bible says he sells himself. He gives himself up for, for hire. So prostitution doesn't have to necessarily mean that you're giving your body for, for, for hire. But it could just simply mean I'm giving up my time. I'm giving up my time. This is not what I'm designed to do. But I'm giving up my time because I've ran out of money. I'm placed in a position that I have to give up my time. It's a gate, and before you know it, you're 80, and you think, what have I done with my entire life? The, the nine to five causes mental issues. How do I know this? When I was working at a job that I hated, and I knew I wasn't designed to, to, to this was a brief moment in my life, because I did music my entire life, but a brief moment in my life, and I had to do this night shift. And every time the night shift came around, my head was hurting, I was stressed out, I was miserable, and then I call and I'm like, hey, um, I'm not feeling well, I'm not this and whatever, and they're like, okay, Calvin, that's cool, we'll find someone to replace you. Soon as I put down the phone, pick it back up, and I'm turned, I'm like, yo, bro, what you doing, what's up, what's poppin', let's go out. All of a sudden, I have strength and I have energy, why? 
because that nine to five is a trap. It's a gate. This is why the prodigal son, the Bible says, and when he came to his senses, which means he was losing his mind. And when he came to his senses, the Bible says he would have gladly ate the, the pig's food. But when he came to his senses, the Bible says he started to think about his father. I want you to think about that. In order for you to come to your senses, the thought has to be the father. After the father, he began to think about him, himself and his value. The Bible says he came to his senses and what happened? He said, my father is rich and successful. Why am I here? This is the identity. Remember what I said last week? Peter found out who Jesus was, and in return, Jesus told Peter who he was. It always happens that way. It always happens that way. My question to you in this moment, as I get to this text, is I want you to honestly think about your life right now. Think about your occupation, what you do with your time, and if God permits for you to see my dad's age, 83, will you be laying in the hospital bed smiling? Or will you say, I wish I gave God more? I want you to think about it. God allows you to see 90. Are you going to lay in that bed and say, I was happy. I'm not insulting any career right now. But are you going to lay in the bed and say, I was happy that I was a custodian my entire life? Or are you going to say, I wish I discovered my true purpose here on earth? Think about it. Some of us are called to be teachers. But we're doing something else. And when I say teaching, I mean teaching. I don't mean uh, you got to preach the word. I'm talking about period. Like you could be in the board of education. You can be in university. You can be in college, whatever. Are you called to be a teacher? But you're a travel agent. Are you called to be a doctor? But you're running a custodian business. I know, I know it hits, I trust me, I know it hits home. But I, I just have to be honest. Because being raised by an old man, you see where things are heading. Is that what you're designed? Are you called to be a counselor? Then why are you driving, TT, why are you driving working for TTC? I want you to just, just consider it. Don't say it's because it pays well. Because money can't be the source I was being paid well at that shelter. I was working for a shelter, but the money couldn't convince me to work the night shift. It gets to the point where you just become frustrated because purpose fuels you. Believe it or not, I can keep doing church and doing church and doing church. I'm called to this, period. It fuels me. My wife tells me, let's go on vacation. I'm like, I'm, I'm, living, I'm living the dream. <laughs> you know I mean? I'm living the dream. It fuels me. It, it excites me. And it does, not preaching, you know. I'm just saying the atmosphere of church. I could be a custodian. I could be a musician. I could run the sound. It don't matter. I just love, I just love what I do. I love church. I've done it my entire life. My question to you now is, what if God is not going to allow you to see 83? Are you happy right now with what you're doing? And if you're not, what are you going to do about it? In the text today, the Bible is speaking about an earth that God designed and built, but it's saying it's in chaos, right? And we all know when God designs a thing, it's perfect. Amen? You can talk back to me, amen? Amen? When God designs a thing, it's perfect. It's flawless. This is the big issue with Lucifer because he was, you were made perfect. You corrupted yourself. It's flawless when God makes, uh, makes a thing. So the question now is, if God created the heavens and the earth, 
Why would it be in chaos? How could God create something perfect, but it be in chaos? Well, then we have the gap theory. Those who are biblical scholars would understand that there's a lot of theories that went on between Genesis uh, chapter, uh, Genesis 1 and Genesis, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 and verse 3, I believe. There's a lot of theories out there. One theory is the, when Satan fell to earth, when there was physical ramifications for that. The dinosaurs were here and felt that physical ramification and the earth went into the Stone Age black because the sun, but the, the dust in the air blocked out the sun. So people believe that was the moment when God looked at creation and then started to do his thing. There's so many theories out there. None of it is substantiated in scripture because the scripture doesn't explicitly say that. But we do know that something happened. We do know that something happened, but we don't know what happened. But we know something happened. What we do know is how God handles chaos. Okay? So when we look at the scripture, it says, the earth was without form, void, and darkness covered the face of the deep. I want you to think about the fact that you go outside and you see a car. It's, it's intact. You see the form of it. Amen? You see the building, you see the form of it. If something does not have form, it means it doesn't have structure. Right? That means that what was aligned is now fragmented. When it's fragmented, it causes a void. A void is inactivity. You cannot produce in chaos. You cannot produce in chaos. And because there is chaos, darkness comes. Now the word darkness is koshek in the Hebrew language. C-H-O-S-E-K, I believe. Koshek. In the Hebrew language. Darkness also means ignorant. Darkness also means ignorant. So it could be... Depending on how you're using the phrase or the sentence, it will determine what the word is. So it's like me saying, uh, Pastor Kadeem, have me the bat, let's go play bat baseball. Or Pastor Kadeem, there's a bat flying in the air. It just depends on how you use it. But darkness means ignorance, which means, which means any area that is chaotic and without void, it means that there is ignorance there, that you are walking ignorant you're 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 an ignorant individual in that area so with that being said i almost said the yardy way of saying it ignorancy but but <laughs> you can tell i went to go see my dad uh, but 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 when you look at the scriptures you have to determine that anytime there's no pro productivity then you, you are ignorant in that specific area. So your finances, if it's not producing fruit, you're walking in darkness. If your marriage isn't producing fruit, you're walking in darkness. If your vocation, like I spoke about earlier, if it's not producing fruit, you are walking in darkness. Why? Because there's no productivity and there's no productivity. Why? Because there is no form, no system. So let's see how God handles it. The Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord hovered over the waters. And then God said, let there be light. Light is O-R-E, I believe, in the Hebrew language. Light. There we go, teacher. Light. <laughs> And light means knowledge. So I want you to think about this. When your life is in chaos, the first thing God does is deal with ignorance. This is why people who do not want to accept knowledge gladly stumble in the darkness. God wants nothing to do with those individuals. Why? Because only pride only pride would cause a man to see the truth, but say, I'm going this way because I don't like where the truth is coming from. 
So God speaks light, knowledge, which means we have to hear what God has to say about any area of our life that is not producing fruit. Amen? That is not producing fruit. He speaks light. But when does he speak light? The Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord hovered over the waters. We, we don't know where God's fixed address is. God lives everywhere. But in the scripture, it indicates that his spirit is located somewhere. This is a location. This is not, um, you know, he's, he's in the atmosphere or he's all over the place or whatever. No, it says the spirit of the Lord hovered over the water. Now, I feel like God is training us on how to handle our lives. Because God knows all things. But for his spirit to hover over the water, I think he's indicating that before you open your mouth, that your spirit has to hover over the situation before it speaks. This is why I don't let any and anybody speak in my life. Because if you ain't hovering over my situation, if you ain't involved in my life, you, light ain't coming out of your mouth. This is why we have to be careful on how we speak to other people. Because if you are not willing to hover and understand the, what is going on in the situation, out of your mouth is ignorance. It's darkness coming out of your mouth. So you got to be careful on who's speaking in your life. Trust me, there's a few people I call. Bishop is, is probably the go-to call because he's invested in my well-being. So that means you got to have people in your life that is invested in your well-being before they open their mouth. The Spirit of the Lord hovered over the waters, which means he came down. This is empathy. Do you even care about the person you're about to speak to? Do you even care about me? This is empathy. The spirit of the Lord came down and hovered before he spoke. This is research. Looking at the situation and then says this is what. Notice it didn't say and the flesh hovered over the water. It said the spirit hovered over the water. So we don't need any fleshy answers. We don't want to hear from the flesh. You shouldn't even listen to your own flesh. You should tap into your spirit man and allow your spirit man to tell you, thus saith the Lord. Are, do you have empathy for the situation? Before you cuss your child out, maybe you should come down, hover over the child with your spirit man and begin to speak to the child's future. Before you, before you deal with your spouse, maybe you should why is he or she operating this way before they even speak? Jamie, our, uh, our counselor, will tell you this. Because I experienced this when I was younger, when I was mad. And, you know, I already told you guys about my jail experience. For me to get out, I had to go through counseling and, and all that stuff. And the counselor was like, uh, what, what do you eat in the mornings? What's your diet? How were you raised? She asked me so many questions that I thought had nothing to do with my temperament, my anger. How is this going to solve my anger? Right now I feel angry. I feel like breaking the desk. How is this going to solve the situation? And then she began to speak. Why? Because she was hovering over the situation. She took the time to hear me out. She did the research. As believers, we have to be careful. Don't just open your mouth. Don't just speak because there's life and death in your tongue. Don't just open your mouth and speak. Believers, we should speak less and listen more and hear more. You're walking in ignorance once again in specific areas of your life, maybe because you don't have somebody who has empathy in your life to come down and speak to you with care and love. Or maybe you have those people around, but you're so closed off, you'd rather walk in ignorance because I don't like where the information is coming from. But either way, it's going to require empathy to deal with that situation. He said, let there be white light after he was hovering over the water. Then after he said, let there be light, I noticed that God began to put systems in place systems in place so that means you cannot just have the word of god and not have 
the system in place to foster the growth. So you can't just hear me preach every Sunday if you're not taking the word and applying it to your life. Systems in place divided the waters, started creating time, started measuring everything out, the fish, the sea, everything. This is what God was doing. He was strategically setting things up. This is how you deal with ignorance. First, you need light, knowledge on your situation. Then you need a system. Do you have a financial system at home? Does your marriage have a system? As you're parenting, is there a system at home? If there's no system for your kids, they go to bed at 12, and then sometimes they go to bed at 2, and then sometimes they go to bed at 8. That's chaos. Is there a system concerning, again, your finances, how you spend and how you handle it? Maybe it's, you struggle to tithe because there's no system in your life. Um, me and Pastor Mo heard a stat the other day that 90% of tithers have a, a, a budget. Have a budget, a strategic budget. And 90% of tithers are doing financially well because they have strategically budgeted their life out to tithe. There's a principle in this that works. Maybe your temperament is because there's no system in your life. Maybe you don't have a temper because I discovered I didn't have a temper. You know what I discovered? I was unorganized. And because I was unorganized, I was always on edge. I was edgy. I was angry. I was edgy. And all I needed to do was just organize my life. You have a school project that's coming up. Don't wait till the last minute. Get into it early. Begin to work it out so that you can walk with ease. This is the system that God put in place. And then, at that moment, after all of that, then he put man in the garden. And what did he say? Be fruitful and multiply, which means you can't be fruitful and you can't multiply if there's no system in your life. And that system has to come from God, the light and the knowledge. This is why we need to seek God's word concerning everything in our life. The Bible is here to teach us, to lead us and guide us. And he placed his Holy Spirit in us, who he said will lead and guide us to all truth. So that means no believer should walk around ignorant. No believer should walk around saying, I don't know. The answers are in the book. You need, you need help with your personal life? It's in the book. Again, you need help with your finances? It's in the book. You need help with your vocation? It's in the book. You don't know who you are? You're in the book. Everything pertaining to life is in this book. But if you are willingly, willingly going through life, not communicating with God, you my friend, you my brother, you my sister, are walking in the dark, stumbling, in the dark you can't see in the dark in the dark financially in the dark vocational wise in the dark mental health struggling because you are in the dark how much time you're gonna stub your toe before you say I need I need light it's not a self-help book because those are things on earth you need to the Heavenly Father to answer. You need light from above. As I conclude, I want to steer your heart in this one area. Jesus, God, looked down on man and Jesus came down, empathy. And the Bible says he came down as light. And he began to put systems in place. The system is the kingdom of God. And then he begins to say, if you guys listen to me and do what I'm saying, you will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. But if you hear me and don't do, you will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The thing about both analogies is they both build beautiful homes. But one was built on the sand, 
and one was built on a rock. I want you to hear me and hear me good. Inactivity is building something because he says, if you hear my words and you don't do it, you're still building, but you're building on sand. So your inactivity is a choice and choosing to respond to God's word is a choice. I say all of this to say this. If he's willing to come down and observe the situation before he speaks, that means that every word that he has spoken over you was calculated. There was no miswords in heaven concerning you and I. Every word that he speaks over you, he already considered everything. So when he says, I have plans for you, you got to trust him. When he says, I have a destiny and a future for, for you, you got to trust him. When you make a mistake, you got to believe that it doesn't write you off. Why? Because he observed everything already and spoke. There's no need to walk in condemnation because he saw it all. You don't surprise God. Nothing surprises God. Nothing on earth surprises God. So every word that he speaks over your life is fine-tuned for you to prosper. Everything he asks of you to do is fine-tuned for you to prosper and be fruitful and multiply. Every word he speaks to you, I want, hear me good. When God opens his mouth concerning you, it's always through the lens of restoration. Because he looks, speaks, and restores. That's the only thing he wants to do is restore you. So that issue that you're going through today, God's like, can I, there's, there's light for that. I have a word to restore you. The guilt that you feel today, he's like, I have a word to restore you. God, okay, I heard Calvin and I, I admit that uh, this job isn't mine. This, this is not where I should be. God's like, let me restore you and put you in your rightful place. Restoration, restoration. Let me restore you. Allow me to restore you. I can course correct it for you. Because remember, he created it perfect, but something caused the earth to become chaotic. But God came through and course corrected for you. Let me course correct it for you. Let me course correct it for me. Give it to me. Let me fix it. I can make the crooked path straight. I can just give it to me. My light, my word is a lamp unto your feet, a light unto your path. Give it to me. And I will straighten out your path. I will straighten out your path. Father, in the name of Jesus, we acknowledge, we acknowledge that you are the light of the world. We acknowledge that you are the one that comes to point the way. That no man comes to the Father but by you and through you. Father, we acknowledge right now that there are parts in our life that darkness has governed. There's parts in our life that is covered from everyone, but you see all things. We can't cover ourselves from you because you see it all. But God, allow us to understand that there is a word for those dark areas. There is a light for that. That we don't have to stumble in the darkness with our vocation. We don't have to stumble in the darkness with our love life. We don't have to stumble in the darkness when it comes to our finances. We don't have to stumble in the darkness when it comes to our future, whether, whether we will get the things we desire or not. That we don't have to stumble in the darkness worrying about 2023 and beyond that. But we know for a fact that we are in your hands and that you have a word, you have direction for every situation that we can possibly face. Because we serve a God that can be touched by our fur. You understand our plight. You understand the human experience. You came down and walked amongst, amongst us. You felt our pain. You felt our hurt. You felt our anger. You felt our disappointment. 
you felt the suicidal thoughts the hopelessness and you came that we may have life and life more abundantly you came to give us light so that we can walk in the light so that we can see things from your point of view so father any one of us that is walking in darkness in any area of our life our, of our lives i pray now that you will begin to shine the light in that area as we hand it over to you god begin to show us the systems the systems is your law it's your word you told joshua don't lean to the left don't look to the right but focus on my law and you will be prosperous God, we want to focus on your law, the systems that you designed for us to thrive in. God, we repent and we get back on course. We are getting back on course with what you decreed and what you declared over our lives. Speak to us this week. Yes, Father. Move on us this week, Father. Shine your light so that we can then be light to this dark world. In your precious holy name I pray, amen. This is a reflective message. This week, I want you to pull out a pen and paper and I want you to begin to write down the areas that you feel are dark in your life, the areas that you need light. Start writing those areas down. And then begin to place your hand over those areas and pray. And ask God, Father, give me understanding in this area. Give me understanding in this area. And watch the Lord begin to shine his light in those dark areas. Let's stand. Father, I thank you for this incredible house. I decree and declare a prosperous week. Let your light shine on us. Give us direction, knowledge, illuminate our lives right now in the name of Jesus. And I pray, God, that we will be a light to those who are walking in darkness, that our light will point to the great light, that we will point people to you, for we are living in a dark world right now that is desperate for knowledge but knowledge from on high because a problem can't be solved on the same level it was created. Father, I decree and declare this house blessed. Yes, I decree and declare this house blessed. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare a prosperous week, a successful week. In your precious holy name, I pray, amen. Those who are online, please visit us at ekmtoronto.com. There you will be updated with all the great things God is doing here. Subscribe to our newsletter. We would love to hear from you. And those in the house, if you haven't subscribed to our newsletter already, please do so so that you can be updated with all the great things that's happening here at EKM. And like Pastor Kadeem said, write a review, go to google.com, type in EKM Toronto, and write an honest review about the ministry because it will help us. God bless you. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Father.
Father, we bless your name. I am. I am accepted. Yes, Lord. I'm accepted by you. accepted by you. Have a blessed week again. We continue to worship in the name of the Lord. Because God, He loves you.